Okay, so this takes me to my next question from one woman inspired you and made you change your beliefs about uh, the capabilities of women to another four women who made a great and major discovery, the Mansoura Soros. Yes, um, really Mansoura Soros' story is really a kind of one, it, one of its kind in my life because it, um, not only it changed the perspective of uh, 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 local people to paleontology, but also um, uh, it's 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 a really life story. Um, when um, starting from convincing families of the students to let them go uh, and camp in the middle of nowhere for three weeks, and, um, and they are all um, like young ladies. Um, first time to be camped outside of their homes. I do very, I do remember very well when I introduced sleeping bags for them. Um, it's a sack that you get in and sleep. And uh, yes, and um, but we spend three weeks in the middle of uh, nowhere, um, filled with uh, great passion and hope of um, really amazing future. Because we know that this discovery was important and it's gonna be really great scientific piece. And um, um, I was uh, really surrounding with the amazing uh, young Egyptian women Sana Sayyid, Ayman al-Dawoodi, Sara Sabr and Mail Amir. And all of them really, um, I can see their eyes um, looking for greatness. And um, I told them in the middle of unearthing uh, Mansoura Soros, um, I do remember this, um, when I took the camera and I told them, look at me, I'm gonna take picture of you. And when you're doing this, because this is gonna be, a great piece for the future uh, when uh, this discovery published. Mansoura Soros was a really important discovery because it's the only dinosaur remain from that time interval from Africa. A telling really great story that uh, there was a connection between, a uh, terrestrial connection, I mean um, land between Africa and Europe back then before dinosaurs went extinct. And um, uh, it's actually um, the most complete from that time. Um, it's herbivorous dinosaur, plant eater dinosaur. And uh, I, I, um, when we actually brought it to Mansoura um, and um, we start to prep it and start to work on it, and uh, every time we know, we discover uh, great information about the past and um, uh, all of a sudden it's published in, um, in uh, 2018 with a great fame. And uh, there is a funny story when I, I try to um, make like a press release for, for this discovery. Um, nobody did believe that much about it, but I decided to go online uh, using my Facebook page. And uh, I didn't have a touch phone at that time, so I borrowed uh, Sanat's phone to use it to go online. And uh, <laughs> it's a funny story because the, the, the life that we actually uh, doing uh, to announce about this discovery gets interrupted by a call from her dad and uh, we um, uh, and uh, we didn't answer uh, uh, to his phone and they keep doing it and uh, but he interrupted again and again and um, i told her well we have you have to pick up this phone it's something important and um, uh, she told him uh, hello dad and he said why your life stream gets interrupted all the time and he said <laughs> That's because of you, Dad, and um, 
uh, and he said, oh yeah, okay, sorry about this. And uh, uh, yeah, it, it, this is the, the, the sh uh, for me, it's a great uh, thing um, because he's watching his daughter um, uh, with the great, um, you say like Achieve. achievement. And um, it's really amazing because um, uh, uh, back in days he didn't believe in her uh, dreams and now he's actually sharing all of her success. So this is one of the Mansura Soros uh, benefit and the, the, there are many others as like all public at that time was talking Egyptian. Uh, I mean, the man of, or, or the, the people from the Middle East started to talk about dinosaurs and, and, uh, and the prehistoric life and all the uh, natural uh, history discoveries that we m are making. So Mansurasaurus is a great step forward. Before Mansurasaurus was a little bit known about Salam Lab and after Mansurasaurus it's now another world. And Mansurasaurus has continued its great discoveries but the latest was in 2023 the Thoth Cetus, yes. and it was named uh, uh, for Tutankhamun. You named Mansurasaurus for Mansura. Yes, was I, I, I named the Mansurasaurus in honor of Mansura University, but the, the species name is actually, um, so that the, the whole name is Mansurasaurus Shahini, and Shahini is my uh, wife's family name. So it's unearthed by girls and named after a woman. She is a great support for my career. and. Uh, uh, my life in, in general, and uh, she is a really amazing uh, uh, lady. And uh, um, I would say uh, confidently, uh, Mansurasaurus is the uh, dinosaur that made by ladies, Egyptian ladies. That's really inspiring. And I want to go to your latest great discovery in 2023, the Tatsitis. It was really huge discovery and has been internationally recognized. So please tell us more about it. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, Tatsitas is really amazing discovery that uh, uh, me and uh, Abdullah Gohar, one of my students, uh, worked on it for years uh, in collaboration with the famous uh, Dr. Mohammed Sameh from the WEAA here in Egypt. Uh, and um, yeah, it's um, it's a great discovery because it's, it's uh, um, now, telling uh, us about the early phase of the uh, ancient whale when they actually entered to the sea. And um, totally um, no link between, no link anymore with land. So before it, before Tatsitas, we discovered the Fayumicetas, which is actually amphibious lifestyle whale that's capable to actually walk in land and also swim. But um, um, uh, Tatsitas is more advanced or more uh, kind of like um, um, uh, really advanced uh, phase of uh, uh, in whale evolution, which actually fully aquatic, live only in, uh, in the seas. And it's actually after we started to study it and compare it, we discover it's actually um, this um, fossils belong to a group called the Bacillusurids, the king of ancient seas. So we have a king of ancient seas. And more, um, this, more studying of these fossils, after we put it in the CT scan, uh, we found that it's uh, still growing. There is some kind of like um, replacement happening in, the, in its teeth. Um, so it's actually a king died young. So Abdullah Gohar, my student, told me like it's very similar to what happened to Tat An Khamun, uh, the great Egyptian king in the in the Pharaoh's uh, civilization. I told him, yeah, it's a great idea. Let's name it that way. It's um, it, it's a 41 million years old fossils, and um, it. Uh, um, died in kind of like the the, um, the year of like 19th of its life, yeah. Like we are talking about great discoveries in very few years from Egypt by Egyptian scientists. What does this always say about the Egyptian natural history? Well, it's actually um, 
really f Egypt is famous for um, prehistoric life, not only our discoveries here in Salam Lab, but the, um, the discovery go back to 1884, uh, when the first fossil discovered, the Ephraim Fayyum, uh, and then the many dinosaurs discovered in 1912 uh, by Ernst Rummer, the uh, uh, German scientist. And they keep discover the the discovery keep coming, uh, but by uh, only by foreign scientists until we actually able to now able to do our science from here in Egypt. Uh, Egyptian scientists. Um, uh, document their own uh, natural history. Um, and that doesn't mean that we actually um, like um, not collaborating with other scientists. I do believe that science has no boundaries, so we actually collaborate with whoever like to work with us here in Egypt. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a great journey. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to see um, the next level of it with uh, the, the new discovery that lies ahead in, my, in, in front of my students. And you told me, this takes me to your uh, first, uh, when you talked first about your six goals vision, and you have successfully uh, achieved five, or worked successfully on five of these plans, and now you are visioning and you're inspired and you're aiming to achieve the sixth goal in your plan. And it all connects with the great discoveries you have been doing and your vision for the Egyptian national history. And you can see it, you can clearly imagine it. And it's really, really important that we can talk about this and spread the word about it and try to help you achieving this. So what are you dreaming of? Well, the, um, as I said, the six goals um, is still continuing. Uh, so, for example, the, um, the first one is actually attracted top tier students. Um, we, in the face now in Salam Lab, uh, preparing the pre-university uh, pre phase students. So, um, 16 and 15 years old boys and girls come to my lab and we train them and take them to the field exhibitions. And we aiming to have the six school uh, achieved uh, in near future because we are already here in Egypt. We have the heritage, we have the fossils, we have all of this, and we also have the minds to do this in a splendid way. Uh, if we uh, actually um, did that, uh, we would be the first in the, uh, the first natural history museum in the Middle East. And uh, we literally very close to achieve this if if the government uh, adopt this uh, uh, dream and uh, it's uh, we have the fossils and uh, we will continue uh, discovering fossils um, uh, all the discovery we made um, uh, over the course of last uh, 13 years uh, uh, they are great but we have also for discoveries coming on our way um, in the near future and in also a far future. Actually, this is one of the main targets of the IDST uh, Minds of the Nair podcast that we are connecting the brightest minds who have amazing uh, vision for the future. And they really see the power of Egypt and they want to highlight this heritage and connect them with the decision makers. And I'm sure that you will reach this goal of theirs. Yeah, I, I, I would say um, if, um, I didn't reach this goal in my life. I'm sure uh, one of my students will reach it. And um, I'm really happy uh, to see this uh, a great step forward for Egypt in, in that discipline after actually colonized by foreigners for many years. Thank you so much, Professor Hisham. We have talked about the amazing discoveries and achievements of Salem Lab and the dreams of women who have changed their perspective and now you're working and you're the first agent for empowering women in this field. Uh, we have the Egyptian heritage, we have the Egyptian minds. Uh, all this comes back to the first professor specialized in this um, science in Egypt. And well, well, this is the end of our talk, but that's not the end of the vision and the dreams of Salem Lab. 
by its founder and by the students as well. And we're expecting more and more from, from them. They have raised the bar so high. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Please stay tuned for our upcoming episode from Minds of the Nine podcast by IDST.